Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a very effective and very cheap tree protector. This corrugated pipe right here is the key. This stuff is really nice and strong. The animals don't even mess with it. I think it's like cross-linked polyethylene. And basically what you do is slit this open, cut it to length, and put it on your little trees. But it's not quite as simple as that. It's not that easy to cut, but I found the secret to how to cut this stuff. It's in another video, but that one I don't, I just go through it and do it. I don't explain anything. So today I'm going to explain and show you everything. And in the process, get the last two protectors on my little burr oak trees I got growing up there. So the first thing I did was go to each tree and measure from the ground up to the main branching. And then... I also recorded any little branches coming out lower and recorded their location as well. So let's go do that on these little trees and then we'll come back here and I'll show you how to cut this stuff. Okay, here's example one. And this is a real good example. You can see that at the bottom, I have a little branch coming out at 14 inches and then Oh, my main height, I would probably want to go to about 40 inches. So I'm going to call this one 14 and 40. And we got one more right here. Okay, it looks like this one is going to be very nearly the same. And I found that to be true with the other ones as well. This one is at... Uh, we'll call it 13 and we'll call it 40 again 14 and 40 and 13 and 40 and let me see if I have an opening on these see I do have an opening on this one but that's just for this little it's a little nub. There was no branch there. Oh, I might have pruned this one. This is a better example. Yeah, I better I better come out here every once in a while and check on these. But I think they're going to be all right regardless. The only thing I need to do is make it hard for rabbits to get in here and nibble on these things. I might just take some uh, Gorilla tape and just close that up just a bit and hold it there Izzy, what are you into? It's a bit breezy here. Hopefully my audio won't mess up And there you can see it again. This one's just these are actually in line. So they're right in the in the split. Hopefully they won't get rubbed on. Yeah, see my idea was to have this. I guess it'll it'll go right if the wind doesn't blow it out of the way. Uh, most people, and you're probably one of them, won't even include these lower branches. This time of the year is the time to prune. And I could prune both those off and most people would actually do that and I would do that as well if I wasn't restoring a oak savanna here. See this is to help restore the oak savanna that used to cover this whole area here. It had really widely spaced burr and white oaks and prairie grasses in between and we have the prairie grasses planted all in there we're slowly removing all of these little sucker trees 
these aren't very old they just grew up recently uh, a few of them are but most of them aren't this was all oak savanna oh in the 1930s or so and then once they started farming this they let all these little trees grow up here so the form of the oak trees that we're looking for is a field grown tree which has all them low branches they they go real low and sometimes they even dip and touch the ground and send out roots and come back up again so that is the reason for having all these little low branches leaving them alone uh, if the rabbits get them or the deer get them so be it but we're not going to prune them off okay so now for cutting this stuff so far everything is pretty basic the cutting of this stuff is another story you can spend a whole lot of time messing around with this stuff if you don't know the best way to cut it so <laughs> so let's go back into the addition that I'm building over there and get these last two cut okay so this is the secret to getting this stuff cut I don't know if I got to all right let me redo this I want it about like that take the safety off okay now what I'm going to do I have two 40 inches so this is 10 feet of conduit and at 40 inches you get three of these out of here so they're a dollar a dollar a piece in the end so this is my spot right here This went a lot easier when I did it last time. I'm not holding this correctly, and I don't have this right. I have this set for cutting bolts. See if I can duplicate how I had it before. May not be easy. There we go. I think maybe that's it. Marked. You know what? I don't think I had this guard on at all. <sighs> no, I don't think I did. it okay let's cut another one I zipped through 11 of these in no time flat when I did this last time So basically what you do is you hold the grinder with a cutoff blade on it, very thin. Just hold it and rotate the pipe into it. That's how you get it cut to length. And then for the slit in it, at first I tried just making a slit and it's almost impossible to get it on the tree. So. Then what I did was I took out this stripe and that just a matter of holding it between your feet and
and turn around. And that is it, except for the, oh, I didn't do it the whole way. Uh, I wasn't cutting all the way through. Oh, this is a bad. <laughs> what the hell? All right. Do this again. I don't think I had the damn guard on. There we go. Okay. Let's see if we can do this one smoother. This one's a lot straighter. <clears throat> There we go. that opening that I measured for, one was 13, one was 14. I think I'm gonna leave it, leave it the way it is and just have the branch come out of the slit. But, well, I'll show you how I was doing it. So we got 14 inches right here. And I went down a little bit. Just like that. Quick and easy. I might as well make that. one and the other one too. Okay, the other one was 13, so go to 12. And there you have it. Quick and easy. Okay, that's it. So, in reality, it takes just a couple minutes to get these cut. You need a grinder with a cutoff blade, not the big fat grinding blades. And it makes short work of it. If you try this with uh, tin snips or some other kind of shears, it just takes forever. And what else did I use? Oh, I tried this on it as well, an oscillating tool. That took forever as well. A sawzall would be kind of sloppy. A circular saw would cut it like butter, but it would get pretty dangerous. Again, this is just three inch corrugated pipe. These things stick one into the other and they're used for drainage in lawns or, or whatever. Sometimes they're perforated, sometimes not. You could use either one on a, a tree protector like this. Next year, I may go to a four inch diameter. I don't know, we'll see how the trees do over the winter. If it needs it, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna take these off in the spring and let the tree get some sun. I don't want to baby them with this uh, dark material and have them not have a strong trunk. But as for protection, I have it in another video. The
the one on the chestnut tree down there. The rabbits girdled that tree two years ago. I cut the tree off at the ground and let the suckers grow up for a while, and then I thinned it to one sucker. Now the sucker is a tree about that big, and I have one of these on it, and the rabbits have been coming up to it and then just going away. You can see the tracks in the snow come up to it and leave. So they know where the food is, but they can't get to it. So I'm gonna get these put on. I'm not gonna show that, but I'll show you after I have them on. It's real easy, you just open it up and slide it on. And like I said earlier, I might put like a little bit of Gorilla Tape on some of them. I don't know, it seems to be doing a good job so far. And I got this idea from the forestry department here in Wisconsin. They use bigger ones, but they're bigger trees. Uh, one of the parks I was at, Governor Dodge State Park, had these on all of its newly planted trees, and they had a bunch of bur oak planted there, which was pretty cool. Okay, let's get these on before it gets dark. Two final words. A couple of the ones I put on before, this is a really windy area, so they worked their way so that they just fell off right on the, the slit. What I'm going to do is just take this same rope and put a tie across the top and one in the middle and that should do it. Also, if you have a lot of deer in your area, it's a good idea to put deer repellent on for a few years. As soon as the tree is above browsing height of the deer, it'll be fine. But what deer tend to do is wander around in the winter and early spring when there's not much to eat and they will bite the tips, bite the growing tips off. They like to do it in the spring a lot. Once you have a few brand new little leaves on there, they're like a, a delicacy and they'll come along and bite them all off. Then your tree, your tree's gonna survive, but it's gonna grow in a funny shape. So it's a good idea to spritz it with this for a couple of years. I only do it in the spring, well, from fall, from when you first start getting snow on the ground until there's plenty of stuff to eat. I spray this every three weeks. They recommend every month, but it starts losing potency before that. So. Every three weeks, give them a good spritz and the deer will leave it alone. And hopefully with those extra little ties on there, these will be maintenance free until spring. At that time, I'll stop spraying them and I'll take these off and put it back on in the fall. All right, that'll wrap this video up. If you want to see this in action, if you want to see me take this off and how these trees do next year, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. And if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section below. I'd be glad to answer them for you. And if you like the video and or share it, it would help the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.